Hi, in this video, I'm going to be talking about everything to do with trend lines. So uh, I'll be talking about why trend lines are used by traders, how to draw trend lines, the best uh, way to draw trend lines as well, and um, all the trend line strategies that traders use. So um, what are trend lines and how are they and how are they used? So um, trend lines are basically support and resistance. Um, in a trend so they identify potential uh, buy or sell zones within an uptrend or a downtrend so um, your ability to recognize a trend line depends on your ability to recognize higher highs and higher lows or lower highs and lower lows so uh, what i mean by that is um, the market needs to be in a trend first of all hence you know the uh, the term trend line so we see a move up so this would be the low and this would be the high and then we see a pullback now um, a trend isn't a trend until this high is broken so until this level here gets broken this level here cannot be a higher low right so basically price has to break past and create a new high right so a new high in order for this to now be considered the higher low right so basically this is this is the pattern that we are looking for that should put us on alert that um a trend line um is potentially you know uh, about to be drawn so we don't want to see anything like this nothing like that we can't draw a trend line there um we need to see higher highs at least a, a new high made for us to be on alert and it's the same thing when we are drawing um, a trend in a downtrend so first of all we need to recognize are we in a potential trend it doesn't mean that we are in a trend because we see lower highs and lower lows it just means that we're in a potential trend and we're projecting forward so until prices break past here this cannot be considered a, uh, a lower high right because we need to see lower highs and lower lows in a downtrend. So, and uh, with trend lines, we connect um, higher lows or lower highs. So we need this to be confirmed by a new low for this now to be considered a lower high. So let's get rid of all of this. So once we now have the in an uptrend a new high that is made what we want to do is we want to connect the higher lows or the lower highs in a downtrend so that would be a higher low and what we're doing is we're projecting forward so we're waiting for price to potentially come back into an area so we've got a low a high and then we've got a new high so this should be our projected zone and our projected uh, diagonal um, support level because this is what this is basically what we're doing we're putting a trend line on the low and then the higher low and if price does come down here this is where we want to be a buyer so this is the first sign we want to see price react at this level and then price go higher so um, again uh, trend lines are pretty much uh, support used as support and resistance diagonal support and resistance whereas um, support and resistance is obviously horizontal and we look for you know a level to be supported so we would look for support here or matter of fact we would look for support on the second touch it's the same thing with trend lines we're looking for the first touch we know that there's a higher low here so now we project into the future and we're assuming that the trend is going to continue higher and again we would look for the same thing in a downtrend so 
we got a low, this would be the high, the low, we need a pullback, again we need price to break past and create a new low for us to now be on alert, collect, um, sorry, connect the high and the um, lower high and then project into the future and hopefully there's an opportunity if price pulls back to this zone right here for us to get short to the downside. Um, what you also want to see is you don't want to see a trend line that is too steep. So you don't want to see something like, um, you know, a trend line like this. You want to, you know, a trend line um, is best traded at around a 45 degree angle. So at least somewhere, you know, um, around here. You know, but anything maybe past the 55, 60% angle, it gets quite steep. You really want to see um, something between maybe the 50%, the 55% um, angle and maybe the 30% the angle as well. Um, so let's have a look at uh, the trend lines on and drawing trend lines on a candlestick chart. So here we have the Euro US dollar currency pair on the daily time frame chart. Now um, we can see that prices have been in a steady uptrend, prices making higher highs and higher lows. So what we first wanna do is really start identifying uh, all the possible trend lines. So um, uh, let's start for example from here. So we had uh, price is basically making lower low. Let me go here. So we've got to move down, move up, and this was the absolute low. Now, until prices break above this swing, and when I say break above, I mean just even if a candle wick above it, and it's until prices make a new high, then. Um, we are not going to go on alert so prices need to make a new high for this area to be considered a higher low right so let's just get rid of these right because prices end up making a move up and staying within this range so if i go like this between this level here and this level here now we don't want to draw a trend line until we see um like i said prices make a new high and this is the new high so now we go on alert and this becomes a higher low right so let's get the salt and then what we do is we connect the low so remember this hasn't happened yet this is all we're seeing at the moment so low we don't know whether this is a higher low until prices make a higher high right so this is an indication of a trend change or a change in the trend or a possible change in the trend remember we're dealing with uh, probabilities in trading so then what we do is project into the future and what traders do is look for a trend line bounce trend lines and uh, nothing should be necessarily traded on their own um, you're looking for confluence so you're looking for the trend line plus maybe some price action plus maybe uh you know an indicator if you're using or trading any indicators that show you um a bullish sign so first of all traders um drawing trend lines will connect the two lows and then prices come down into here. Now, um, many traders draw the trend line just as a line. Um, I don't believe in drawing trend lines as a line or any support and resistance as a line. Trend lines um, and support and resistance, matter of fact, are, um, are zones. So um, when I'm drawing trend lines as a zone, what I will do is I will um, clone 
this line oh clone right and then what I would do is the candle of the low um, I don't identified low the body of that candle the lowest uh, the, the, the lowest point of the body that's where I will put the second line right so anywhere around here and then this area here would be the zone that um, would be a um, I would look for for a bullish signal right so prices came within this zone tested the lower end of the zone and then prices went higher if you do have a parallel channel tool if you're using trading view or any uh any platform uh, trading charting platform that has uh, a parallel channel tool what you can do is connect the low and then drag it back to the body low of the low candle and that will give you a bit of a channel and I'll get into uh, trend channels in a bit after I've uh, um, taught you about the trend lines so what you want to do is look for an area that comes into the trend line and then look to buy look for a buy entry um, and signal around here and as you can see prices make continue to make new highs now what you uh, also want to do is adjust trend lines right so the market is never perfect we don't um, you know in, in in a perfect world you know prices make uh, higher highs and higher lows let me actually let me get a pencil right so prices would have made you know the perfect high perfect low like that and then you know we've got a brilliant trend line you draw like that right but in in on the charts you know the the perfect line is uh is doesn't happen and this is because um the markets can be in an uptrend but we can also uh trade sideways for a while so you might get higher like higher highs higher lows and then prices might do something like this for a little bit and then continue higher maybe go sideways a little bit go higher and so on and so forth so what you want to do is adjust the trend lines right as you go along right so i'll show you what i mean by that so as that is now the new low the new higher low this has to be now adjusted this trend line from here instead of here this now is going to be the new low and then if prices do come back to that area in the future that would be the um, area that you would be looking for because <clears throat> what you want to do is look for obvious trend lines there's no point in looking for obscure trend lines you want to look for something that's clean something that connects the wick lows of a trend line um, you're not looking for something like this where there's a lot of ambiguity just connect the lows and adjust your trend line um, accordingly so now we have this move uh, higher here all right so as prices make new highs and they come you know and uh, prices are new highs is, is made here right and then you get a pullback so prices move sideways for a little bit and then we move higher what we want to do is connect these higher lows here so uh, just as an, also as another tip although we had this level here as the you know higher low from from that move previously um, again it's a bit messy because you've got candle wicks um, in the way so although ideally you'd want to see something like this you do have these candle wicks here which are outside of that so what you want to do is just make it as clean as possible just do it from from here the body is there and then project into the future and then see what comes now 
as I was saying before, so prices have come into this zone and if there was a bullish signal, then you would try to uh, to get in on, you know, capitalized traders. What they would do is place their stop loss below the trend line and then wait for prices to pos uh, potentially go higher. So as we go up, as we go higher and make new highs, right? So we've got, this would have been put at the high, prices pulled back. Uh, prices got breached but then prices uh, made a new high so from here once prices make a new high then what you do is you just adjust the trend line and then that is now your new trend line just because a, a trend line is breached doesn't mean that we've stopped being in an uptrend so that is now the new line and if prices do come back to this area here look for a bullish signal and that is how in place you stop there and that's how traders trade trend line uh, bounces now trend lines um, as previously stated are support and resistance they're diagonal support and resistance <clears throat> so uh, support and resistance, just like um, you know, horizontal support and resistance. Um, you uh, will trade these breaks as resistance. So support becomes resistance, and resistance becomes support. So if prices were to break through here, traders would wait for a pullback to resistance. So support breaking and failing then becoming resistance and then trade to the downside with their stop loss above the resistance zone. So um, trend lines become support and resistance and they work in exactly the same way as, um, as horizontal support and resistance. So let's go through a few examples. Um, let's have a look on this chart, right? So we've got, let's look for some obvious uh, trend lines, right? All right, so let's see from here, right? So let's get this, right? So let's walk our way through another trend line to the downside, right? And we'll try and find some examples of support becoming resistance and resistance becoming support at the same time. So what we have is a previous move higher. We can see, you know, higher lows being made, higher lows being made. And then now we start to see prices pull back, prices pull back, right? So prices now make a new low. And why is that a new low? Because this would have been considered a higher high. Once prices break the higher high, we're either going to be entering a ranging market or a uh, or a downtrend. So once prices breached this level here, this obvious level here, then we we go on alert pretty much and we wait for prices to pull back. So this is the area. And again, we can't draw a trend line until we, we couldn't have drawn that trend line there until prices had broken below here. Once prices had gone below this level, now this is our trend line. So let me clear the chart. So once that move happened, there would be the trend line and that's where we would go on alert so then again uh support and resistance being a zone what you would do is clone this line and then take it to the body of the candle high or low um so now this becomes the zone that we want to uh, be a seller so we can see 
and projecting into the future prices came up into this zone gave an engulfing candle and prices went to the downside now when prices came up in it again we had this uh, this kind of pin bar type candle and then we had a break support or resistance becoming support prices actually came back down into this zone here so we got a break prices came down into this zone and then we had a reaction from there and again you can see start to see prices do react in the future we had a bit of buying there prices came back bit of selling to the downside prices came back right um, but what we want to do is continue on with the trend line so we've got let's uh, let me put the trend channel makes it easier right so once we had identified that trend line there we can't adjust the trend line until prices make a new low so that would have been the low there so until prices made a new low here now we've got this move here so we've got a low now this is a confirmed lower high we confirm lower high there prices pull back now we can't draw we can't adjust the trend line until prices make the new low so once prices in real time had done this now the trend line has to be adjusted to here to here so as clean as possible what we're going to do is, is is look at the highs all right so that get rid of this and get rid of some of these all right it's just being awkward there we go come on that's it all right so now this becomes the trend line or trend zone so when prices then came back up into this zone you can see the reaction prices did spike through but the trend line held and then we made new lows once the new low was made that now becomes the zone and as you can see prices came up into this zone reacted came up to the higher end of this zone and did react and then we break through and if prices were to come back down traders would look probably to this zone if they kept it on their chart as some sort of uh, support as this is acted as resistance resistance in the past so again let's look at uh, a couple more examples so we can look at all right so you can see this started off as the low bit of a high pullback so until prices break higher all right this is our move so we've got a low now we can't draw the trend line until prices make a new high so as soon as price broke above here now we go on alert and we wait for price to come back and we can basically plot our um our trend line or trend zone it's parallel actually let's just get rid of this one here wow right, so you do it as clean as possible and then prices come back to here right so you can see when prices came up into the zone it did have a reaction prices broke through now prices did come back up and you can see that traders so you had this 
little reaction right here prices broke through prices came back up into this zone and then we had a reaction to the downside and then prices came back up in and again as all this move is going on until prices make a new high because this was the move so until prices breach this area here the trend line cannot be adjusted because we're in a range and then prices make new highs let me just remove all drawing tools now what we do is instead of using the previous area we would adjust our trend tool to the candle wick low once this new high was made and then we project and then we can see now we had a clear bounce another bounce break prices come back retest the zone and then you can see prices fall away so again when would we adjust this trend line if prices had broken above this level here if prices had broken above that level there and this was the absolute low let's say that was the low or there and prices had made new highs to the upside then we would adjust the trend line um, let's look for some more examples let's get rid of that Move all drawing tools right um, so I'm trying to see in real time all right let's look at this one here so we can see first of all this was a low and again in real time you would look at it like this so you wouldn't have any information to the right of the chart so you've got my height you've got a pullback now until prices break above this doesn't become a trend line or even this doesn't become uh, um, an area of interest so prices as soon as price breaks above there we now go on alert and start plotting our trend lines there we go parallel channel we start to look here now trend lines um, usually I suppose the angle um, you want to have maybe a, more of a steeper angle if you have a uh, quite a low angle um, somewhere around maybe the 10 20 what you probably are looking at is um, what is commonly known as a, uh, a a trend channel right so um, this would be a good time to talk about trend channels matter of fact so what you want to do is um, is basically um, plot your trend channel so if you don't know what a trend channel is is basically a trend line from the low side but also you have um, resistance to the high side right so in fact let me um, draw a trend channel on my whiteboard so a trend channel is where prices make kind of um, almost like a low shallow type of uh, trend right so prices are making higher highs and higher lows whereas before we're looking for something like this right looking for maybe a steeper trend right 45 degree angle yeah with a trend channel prices are steadily steadily making uh, higher highs and higher lows and trend channels usually have you know something like a maybe a 10 uh, you know 15 degree type of angle now um, a trend channel what you're attempting to do is trade the you know buy at the lows but also sell 
at the highs so this would be resistance all right so you're buying here and what you're attempting to do is sell here so let's go back to the charts so um drawing a trend channel right we have uh it starts off pretty much by identifying uh, where the trend line is. So in this example, we have a low, we have a swing, prices come back down. And again, we're not on alert that we have a trend line down here until prices break above this new high, because that is our pattern. Right, so as soon as prices uh, spike above, break above, go above um, this high here, now we're on alert for a potential channel. Now, let's delete these. Um, for the uh, channel tool, <clears throat> what you want to do is before we had, um, you know, uh, we would plot the trend zone or trend line tool to the body of the low candle, right? But as this is a trend, um, a trend channel tool, what you want to do is look for where price is now resisting, right? So at first, we don't know resistance is resistance until you get a, um, a reaction or two touches of a level, right? Or two confirmed reactions of a level. So as prices are making new highs, right? We have no idea if that is resistance until prices touch it again and then get rejected. So the at first, you're constantly adjusting your resistance uh, end to your channel higher and higher until you do get a large reaction. So prices come up here, prices do react a little bit, it kind of breaks out and then you get a strong rejection of price down here. As a tip, what you can do when looking for channels is look for some sort of trend change. So as we were making higher highs and higher lows, you can see here, and then prices made a new high, here, here, right. So this would have been the last, you know, higher low. You wanna probably be on alert when of the resistance once prices uh, make a new low here. So a candle wick um, just below the last swing. So if prices do something like this, then this is probably more likely, the, the higher end is gonna be more likely to be a resistance level because we're looking at a, a potential trend change. Or, um, and when I say trend change, we could be going into a sideways market. Yes, we can continue higher like this did, but in the short term, uh, in order for this to really change the whole trend and the whole market, you would have to at least break below this level here to be, cut, be considered, or this level here, matter of fact, this trend line to be considered maybe some sort of ranging market or into a downtrend. So we're still making uh, prices are still making new highs and what we're trying to do is just capture price from the lows and the highs so as we continue to go forward price is contained between this low and this high and we're steadily going higher in this channel price is contained within the channel and then you can see that prices when they come up here again they do react and prices are rejected and prices contained within this level until here and then again with that trend line bounce we were talking about so support becoming resistance you can see 
that price broke and prices came back up into the zone prices reacted to the downside let me get rid of this let's look for another one another potential channel right okay so we've got another channel potential channel here so and this is an example that we used before I'll go into another uh, pair just to show you as well so we've got new highs so once prices made a new high we now go to our trend channel tool and then we start to look for a potential change in the trend so we can see here prices made high kind of pulled back high and then prices broke below that level there so now what we did get is a bit of a reaction prices came up again tested as in the previous example now we also adjust trend channels in the same way that we would adjust um, trend lines so prices until prices make a new high which they did right here we can adjust the trend channel to here and as you can see projecting into the future prices came up into this zone here contained within the channel and then prices broke down so um, let's go to another chart and see if we can find some more examples of trend channels and trend lines this is the uh, US dollar Canadian dollar one hour chart now um, we have a nice uh, trend um, and it looks like a trend channel as well this move here so um, if we were looking to uh, connect the uh, trend lines first of all what we'd be looking for again is identifying lower highs and lower lows so we did have this um, this really kind of steep move but we want to start from here remember the steeper the move um, uh, I suppose the less the more likely it is to uh, to break so we want to see something more um, like this 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 type of angle so um, what you've got is steady uh, lows high well a little high there so you're looking at steady again this isn't a low until or well, this isn't considered a, a lower high until this is broken so until that breaks let's just uh, delete that a bit yeah and then we consider this and then same way when this one breaks we consider this one and until that one breaks then we don't consider that one right but if we were connecting it from the top we'd be looking for this low to break first so let's get rid of all drawing tools so that would be the one and then we would start to look for <coughs> lower highs and lower lows so parallel channel right there we go there's the high then we've got that one there and then back to the body of the high candle and now let's start to look for trading opportunities to the downside as we make lower highs and lower lows and as you can see prices started making um, retracements back into this identified trend zone and then we're just basically projecting projecting again we've got a nice touch here we've got another touch here we've got another touch here and then price eventually does break now drawing the trend channel what we would do again 
is once we identify lower highs and lower lows, we adjust as we go along. So once that creates a low, then actually matter of fact, it would have been from here because we want to be as we want to try and make it as clean as possible. So when I say as clean as possible, as far as if you do it from there, um, you've still got, if you look to the left, you've still got wicks kind of protruding through it. So you want to make it there. There is the area that you want to make it. So in a downtrend, um, you're looking for buying opportunities, uh, counter trend moves. So you can see that when prices came back down in, when prices came back down in here and as prices break through and create new lows what you have to do is adjust your trend channel so as prices keep going down there were some possible opportunities there was one right here there was one right there and again as prices are breached to the upside as well and to the downside you can see that there were some buying opportunities um, so I do hope that helps with trend lines and trend channels if you have any questions email uh, me at info at trading180.com